Hey everyone, this is Louis Seven, and today I will explore the question of is the Lord of the Rings Online pay to win? This is a question that I get asked frequently a lot with Lotro, and it is an important aspect of any MMORPG. Unfortunately, I do not think there is a straightforward answer of yes or no, so we definitely need to dive deeper and first explore, I think, what it means for an MMO to be pay to win in the first place. Uh, for this video, I will point out that I'm going to be focusing on Lotro's PvE player versus environment, as that is the primary part of the game, even if there is technically PvP with player versus monster player, but that is a bit unique and I think it could warrant its own video if there is interest, so let me know. But before we consider what pay to win is, we first have to ask what is winning in an MMO and how do you win at an MMORPG? Uh, do you consider something like reaching the level cap to be winning? Do you consider maxing the traits of your character to be winning? Is like getting the best possible gear in the game winning? Is it something more straightforward with content like an RPG where just the ability to complete the content in the game at any difficulty level is winning? I think also an important distinction from winning is skipping grind. It is easy to say that Lotro does actually have a lot of pay to skip, but is skipping really winning? So when we think about what pay to win means, there are a lot of different considerations for what winning means. Uh, personally, when I think about pay to win in an MMO, my first thought is that you would basically have to buy something you would have to pay to get services or boosts or something with real money that make your character stronger so you can complete encounters that you would otherwise not be able to complete without spending any money. And if I Google what does pay to win mean in an MMO, there are actually a ton of results with a variety of answers, but there is one common thread that I keep seeing, and that is that pay to win means you can pay to get an advantage over somebody who does not pay at all, or otherwise you can essentially pay to make your character better than what you would be able to just using in-game resources. And I could honestly probably spend a whole video talking about what pay to win even means, but the point of this video is to explore if Lotro is pay to win. So to do so, we will be going over some elements of the game that might be pay to win like and might match a variety of pay to win definitions. And yes, to start off, that does indeed mean that Lotro has some pay to win elements. First off, I already mentioned pay to skip, and to go ahead and cover these, some pay to skip things in Lotro include level skips, XP accelerators, which does include virtue XP, and then there's also the clash trait point packages and valor packages, which include all three of the above, as well as like straight virtue XP tomes. So those are all, they just allow you to skip content and get, say, closer to end game or whatever it is you want. Uh, so at this point, now that we have covered pay to skip, before we get to the next pay to win elements, I actually want to go to the Lotro store. So here in the Lotro store, hey, we're at Luke's box keys because those will come up as a big topic in this video. And the first thing I actually want to do is show you all something that you might not know, and that is you can go to your history for your Lotro points. And one of the things I want to highlight here, there's an important aspect when considering pay to win in Lotro or just paying for things on the Lotro store in Lotro, is that you can get in-game points by doing deeds in-game. They give you Lotro points. So doing in-game activities without having to pay or anything, you can get Lotro points. On top of that, as a VIP, you get a monthly Lotro point. You do have to subscribe to be a VIP and pay, but you do get Lotro points monthly with that. So with all that, like you can see all these in-game points that I get. This was doing a lot of activity, I think, in Gundabad around this time. And when you go through a new area, you can complete a lot of deeds and get a lot of Lotro points. So just in the context of when thinking about Lotro as if it's paid who win or not, something important to keep in mind is that you can actually get Lotro points in game and you don't even have to pay. But if we just go to the Lotro store, if you just look at various things, you might think of something like character. You can get character upgrades in the Lotro store. Uh, there are level skips, which shows the clash traits and virtue accelerators, all that sort of stuff. There are even stat tomes and bundles, things like that. If we go to buffs and services, Dari did loot boxes. Uh, the keys for that, there are all these rep, I actually did not cover rep boosts, uh, but yes, there are rep and deed boosts, things like that, there are combat buffs. There are all these things that might seem like they are pay to win. So with some of those later examples that I covered in the Lotro store, some of those things that you can buy, they actually give you an outright advantage. Again, though, Lotro is very complex because on top of that, you can also earn some of these things in game, but these sources are very inconsistent and they rely very heavily on RNG on random drops. 
And for the purpose of this analysis in this video, I will be interpreting things in the Lotro store as things you must buy with real money for this. And that said, I do want to make it clear with all this talk that there are technical exceptions from that, and it is important to keep all that in mind. But first off, the first pay to win thing in the Lotro store are those stat tomes. These give a permanent boost to your stats in Lotro. Technically, these can drop in game and you are free to actually buy and sell them or trade them with other players, but there are no reliable sources of them in game. And this is something that actually jumps out as pay to win, getting a permanent stat boost. But I will point out in modern day Lotro, the stats are quite bloated and the stat tomes actually give a relatively small boost to stats, but it still does boost your stats, which is perhaps still getting you closer to this winning. I think something that gives you a permanent stat boost is something that might jump out as pay to win, but we have to think about modern day Lotro where stats are quite bloated and these stat tomes give a relatively small boost to stats, but it still does technically boost your stats. Uh, for example, we can go with 20 ranks of vitality. This will require 20 vitality stat tomes, and this would give you 722 vitality to your character. This is roughly a 5 to 20% of the amount of vitality on a single piece of gear at level 140, and it gives approximately 3.5k morale, depending a little bit on your class. But that 3.5k morale is fairly insignificant and it's only about a 0.5% boost over a player with about 700k morale, which is roughly what you might see for a level cap player. But again, it still is technically a boost, even a tiny boost like that still is a boost over what you can get in game, at least reliably. And in total, if we look at the cost of this, these 20 vitality boosts would run you about 10,000 Lotro points, which is, that's valued a little bit over $60. And this is something, keep in mind, this only affects one character. And that's just really expensive, but it's also a tiny boost. And with all of that, I would actually 100% consider stat tomes as a minor pay to win element in Lotro, even at the level cap. But stat tomes, I think, get a lot worse if we look at lower levels. So each stat tome has a minimum level of use, and you can actually get a much larger percentage boost to your stats at lower levels. So going with vitality as the example, at level 50, the maximum 278 vitality you can get from rank 11, that's the max you can get as a level 50 character, that gives a bit over 1,000 morale, and it actually has a decent impact on total morale, especially considering at that point you probably only have a few thousand morale in the first place. So that can be a pretty big over 10% boost to your total morale at that point. And while I use vitality as an easy example here, the same idea actually applies to other stats like might, agility, will, and even a little bit fate. Fate is a bit different just because it's a generally like broadly less useful stat than other primary ones, but still the idea applies. So with these stat tomes like this, I actually think they're one of the bigger offenders of being paid to win at Lotro, just like paying to get stats. But it brings to question, are these increased stats even necessary? So remember back to my first thought, what I thought of with pay to win, I mentioned that you would not be able to run whatever content without actually paying to like buy these boosts that you otherwise would not be able to get just by playing the game. So I think for level cap players with current stat amounts, these are insignificant enough that they won't give too much help in the grand scheme, like in the big picture of things. However, for lower level players, they may actually be able to notice the stat boost and they may be able to a lot more easily clear content with these stat boosts. And most content I will say in Lotro is quite easy, especially while leveling and all that sort of stuff. But it is true that you as a player might be like looking to solo difficult content or even Rage just doing some interesting challenge like that. And more stats just always helps with that sort of thing. Or even if you do play with a group, like if you're doing group content with a group, maybe you're playing with a group of like lower skilled players or even lesser geared players that don't have many stats in the first place, or your group may be understaffed if you're like sometimes my Ken trying to run a raid with four people or something crazy like that. Pumping up your stats really can help and it may allow you to do what your group was not able to do without, say, like paying to buy all these boosts and the such. And that, in fact, to me, would qualify as being paid to win in these scenarios. So yeah, with these different scenarios and different applications, the increase in stats, which may be minor for certain players, they could be pretty major for other players and actually have an impact on if you actually need them in game for whatever you're doing. 
And as a preview of things, I actually think the sidetrack of stats is important because next up we need to talk about combat boost. And if I thought stat tomes were bad, these might be even worse when I think about it a little bit more. The good news is they are actually indeed cheaper in the Lotro store compared to the stat tomes but I don't think that makes them any more excusable. Combat boosts are in Lotro are going to be temporary buffs that give your character a percent boost of some variety. Currently, the Lotro store offers 5% increased outgoing damage, 10% decreased incoming damage, there's one that gives you 5% increased morale and power. There's one that gives you plus 5 hope, which actually stacks with other in-game sources, and this will ultimately give you more morale boost. And basically, dread resistance is a way to think about it, counters dread. And there are also some specialty scrolls that give a number boost to finesse and mitigation, but those are pretty decent numbers that they boost those by. And with the percent boost, thinking back about those, those will actually allow you to go over stat caps, so there's no downside or waste in using them. You can always make use out of them, even if you're at the stat caps, as I said. And I think these actually do give a clear advantage to players that use them. In fact, there are kins that I am aware of, and maybe braid groups is the better way to put it, that essentially require the use of these because they are a very helpful thing in and things like end game progression and especially like when you're when you're an end game progression kin and you're attempting to do like a world first run of something complete the raid at whatever difficulty the first in the world or even on your server it really does help with things like that and i think that idea of winning the race to be the first in the world to do something like that or whatever these are paying to at least help you they don't make you win but they definitely help you in winning because the the benefit they give is relatively significant. So while I go on about this as these being like very helpful for players winning, it's is a good point to remind you all that there are sources of these outside of paying. You can get them from daily Hobbit gifts, although that is like huge RNG and definitely not worth relying on. You can also buy them with in-game earned or monthly subscription Lotro points. I do know people that do that as well. That's like what they spend their Lotro points on because it is something you can buy on the Lotro store to give your character a boost. So hey, that's what they're going to spend their Lotro points on, which I mean, if that's what you want to spend your Lotro points on, that is totally okay, but that is the way it works in Lotro with the complexity of you being able to earn Lotro points in-game. I also will point out with these variety of stat boosts, they are somewhat frequently given away for free from a weekly coupon code. Sometimes there's a coupon code that gives you 25 of the plus 5% attack damage ones, which are I actually hoard those and just save them for when I really need them, but I actually never have had to buy those from the Lotro store. I've felt like pressured to buy those because, well, we'll get more into that later, but I actually get enough of those for free that I don't worry about it too much. So basically all this stuff is important to keep in consideration if you are trying to assess if these are truly pay to win or not. And along the same lines, there are also going to be premium potions that they actually have separate cooldowns from like regular in-game potions. And these can provide an advantage in fights where you may need the extra healing boost. And while I don't think they are good to always rely on, there are definitely situations where premium potions do help you win encounters in the game. I have even run into this a lot in game where I've had premium potions and they have saved me or helped us win a boss fight or something like that. But I will point out these actually share all the elements of the previous combat boost. They are cheap and they're frequently given away and you can get them from Hobbit gifts. So they're not quite as bad, but it's still the only like guaranteed way you can actually get them in game besides the like a weekly coupon code is to buy them from the Lutra store. All right, moving on away from buffs, boosts, and those potions, we should cover Universal Solvents, which is going to be a premium ingredient used to craft essences. Again, these are technically earnable in-game. I always have to put that disclaimer, it seems. It is very low and very RNG-heavy drop rates, though, but the main source of these is going to be the Lotro store, and these are necessary for all crafted essences, nearly all crafted essences, that is, and definitely necessary for all useful crafted essences. One caveat here is that for newer areas in Lotro, these uh, craftable essences are typically a tier or two weaker than the absolute best essences available, but this was not always true and it's still something i consider to be a pay to win element of crafting simply because you need universal solvents to craft essences 
Now, things get more complicated, of course, when we consider other uses of universal solvents, which it is currently the only item in the Lotra store that you can sell for in-game gold. And I know that opens this like whole can of worms of if buying gold for real money is considered pay to win, but it is a thing. And while items you can purchase for gold and Lotra specifically are relatively limited, it does bring up the topic with paying to like get boosted in instances, something like that. So whether your motivation to do so to like get a boost is just to complete the instance and raid for like deeds, which is like Lotro achievements, or maybe for gear, or whatever it is, it technically is an aspect of the Lotro store and transactions player can make in game to get whatever they want out of it. So just some uh, thoughts there and things you can do with being able to buy gold for Lotro points. And with the mention of gear, I think it is finally time to discuss that. In Lotro, the best gear you can earn is generally going to be from direct drops, like from the most difficult instances and raids is where the best gear is generally going to be. And there are also, there's also this barter feature, but often bartering is going to be locked behind completion of tiers of instances and raids anyway, so you'll have to have from them before you can barter. But things get really complex though when we start to consider the barter currency, Embers of Enchantment, and loot boxes. So I think we can all agree that loot boxes are bad, even if they aren't pay to win. But the sad thing is that in Lotro, loot boxes do have pay to win elements on top of like big RNG and all that randomness that goes on with them. So you can get pretty good gear just straight out of loot boxes. Typically, this is not going to be the best year in the game, but you could consider, I would consider at least kind of mid to high tier and raid ready gear. As in, this gear is a bit better than what your entry level endgame gear is going to be, and it will also set you up for most content in the game, even some higher difficulties. So when thinking if this is pay to win, I instead have to ask, is it pay to skip? Because right now I feel like I'm really favoring pay to win, but maybe it's just skipping a little bit of gear grind, running some lower tier instances and the such. Because because as I mentioned, you can get comparable gear in game and you can even get better gear in game. But then maybe if you consider a solo player that never groups, this may be the best gear they can get from loot boxes and embers of enchantment. And then that brings into question, maybe somebody might ask, like if a solo player considers this pay to win, maybe somebody else will ask, why does a solo player need good gear anyway if they can go through all the solo content? Well, there are actually many reasons why a solo player might want good gear and just better gear, they might want to just better their character for one. Uh, so maybe for them, this would actually be considered a bit pay to win because there aren't really better options for getting gear while just playing solo. So as you can see, loot boxes introduce a complex mess that I honestly, I just want to revert to saying that loot boxes are bad anyway, and any elements that are even like somewhat close to considerable to being pay to win just make them even worse. All right, so another feature we have of loot boxes and Lotro's endgame gearing system is the Embers of Enchantment barter currency. So a variety of endgame activities give you a small amount of these embers. Currently with embers, you can buy the exact gear that loot boxes have, also without RNG, so you can actually select. That is actually somewhat nice. The current level 140 endgame, I will say, is still in development with us at the time of recording this video, not even having the first raid yet. But with recent endgame caps and what is expected for the current one, embers will be used to barter for generally good gear, including raid set gear, uh, special essences, also regular essences, and just stuff like that. Raid gear and just better pieces in general will typically require the deed completion that I mentioned, so like a fresh level cap character can't just straight up barter for the best gear in game, they will actually have to complete whatever instance or requirement first. But once you do complete the deeds and have the barters unlocked, it is technically true that you could use loot boxes to get a bunch of barter currency to just buy some of the better gear pieces available in game. And I think this raises the distinction between pay to skip versus pay to win again. And it also makes me question, is there a point where there's so much pay to skip that you can just consider it pay to win anyway? But anyway, just like earlier, I will once again conclude that loot boxes are bad and anything gear, stats, boosts, essences, currency, or just anything close to that that is in loot boxes just makes them significantly worse. 
So, leaving off on that sour note, I hope you all can see that there really is a lot of pay to skip in Lotro. That's kind of naturally the way it is with how much grind there is in Lotro. And on top of that, there are some definite pay to win elements with a lot of complexities to go along with them. Advantages of the pay to win elements, like if you actually do pay to get those and consume those, I think the advantages are most clear if you are trying to solo difficult group content or raid content even, especially at lower levels where like stat tomes have a bigger effect, for example. And the advantages are also more clear if you're doing higher difficulty endgame content or especially progression content, as I talked about. Now, for solo content, story content, leveling, and like low to moderate difficulty group content, kind of what I would consider a maybe typical ish casual player, what they would do, these pay to win elements with stat boosts and combat buffs, I think they can feel a lot less necessary than what these other aspects of the game might make them feel like. For me, I would consider myself a generally casual player who happens to be taking a break from actually doing any end game content right now. And for what I'm doing right now in my regular Lotro gameplay, I don't actually really think about these uh, boosts and buffs and even don't think about loot boxes. I honestly do, though, think that Lotro leans towards the pay to win side a bit too much. In fact, one of the reasons I am taking a break from endgame is largely due to endgame systems, which the endgame systems are affected by these pay to win elements and especially loot boxes if we think about them. Uh, and that is true with all these, even if I don't engage with them like these pay to win systems, I don't engage with at all. I definitely don't support it. So that is basically my conclusion on how I feel about pay to win. I don't like pay to win and how I feel about pay to win specifically. And Lotro, I do think it leads a little bit too much towards pay to win. So with that negative note to end this video on, I hope you all did find this helpful, whether you are maybe looking to start or even come back to Lotro and are concerned about it being pay to win, or even if you already play the game and maybe a little bit less familiar with the tarp topic. Either way, I hope this exploration video was helpful, even if it was honestly a bit demotivating to me. Uh, please do let me know what you think about Lotro being pay to win, or if you don't think it is pay to win at all, and just some other aspects that might be pay to win that I have not even covered here. Please do let me know, I'm always interested in your all's thoughts and comments. And as far as this video goes, if you did enjoy it or found it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing for more, or becoming a channel member to support the content, which any support you give me I will not use to buy anything pay to win. And thanks for watching everyone.